Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Can we talk with Monique? I am Monique. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new, welcome to the channel. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for all of your support. But before we get started, do not forget to um, subscribe to the channel. If you like this content, subscribe. Also hit that little bell and that way you'll be notified. And after you watch a video or even during the video, Give me a thumbs up because that always helps with the algorithm. So, guys, you know we've been talking about this Ernesto, Shirley Strawberry type of thing. But this is a story that we are able to look at because it's right in our faces. We're able to see the videos. Now the um, we're able to see the uh, in-person videos and we're able to hear the phone calls. This is not typical. I told you before, this is just my opinion. I believe that uh, Ernesto um, is a classic in my opinion, right? I'm not a therapist or psychiatrist. However, he does check off the boxes in the DSM-5 um, for narcissism, being on that spectrum. Very high up in my opinion. Um, I believe that he has studied people. I believe that... Uh, there are times when he's predatory. Um, and so we're able to look at the um, video phone calls and able to listen to the phone calls. As it relates to his friend, because this is a picture of his friend and Ernesto. It's supposed to say soul ties, destinies, alt destiny altered. Um, I believe she has some, some um, there's something psych psychiatric, psychology, uh, wise, I haven't quite put my finger on it. Excuse me, I'm drinking some water. I haven't quite put my finger on it. I think she's on the spectrum as well, but she, it, in my opinion, is maybe some antisocial personality disorder or borderline personality disorder. Both of them, in my opinion, are very manipulative. But this actual video, and these are my opinion, this is for fair use, for educational commentary purposes, okay? And so I wanted to talk about soul ties because um, when we're looking at these stories and we're looking at the life of some people, even in our own lives, you hear the word soul tie and it's never really mentioned in a positive manner. Um, I believe that um, his friend in him, Ernesto, has a tie. I believe uh, Shirley and him have a tie. And all the women, whoever he's been with, they have a tie. And his close personal relationships, like Dre, they have a tie. But what actually is a soul tie? You know, I mean, is this something that is in Merriam-Webster, um, the definition of it, so to speak, you know? And, you know, a lot of times I joke around, but there are times when I'm serious. And this is a serious video. I may joke a little bit, but, you know, I'm seeing a theme here. And... You know, I'm wondering if, and I'm not wondering, if people are understanding what they're actually listening to, you know. I'm, I'm wondering if people are, you know, able to put it together, you know, well, I, well, in their own special way, you know, in their own special way. So let me look for a definition of, of soul tie. Let me see if Miriam, our friend Miriam Webster, has a um a definition. I should have looked this up before I got started. Miriam Webster, and let me see what the Urban Dictionary has. Um, you know, let me see. I don't see soul tie. I do not see the word soul tie. But let's see what tie means. Merriam Webster, the definition of a tie or tying. To fasten, attach, or close by means of a tie. To form a knot or a bow. Hmm. Okay. To place or establish in a relationship. To unite in marriage. To join electrically. Wow. I think that's very interesting. This is what Merriam has to say as it relates to the word T-I-E. Let's see what 
the Urban Dictionary has to say uh, as it relates to soul tie. Let's see. Um, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> it says soul ties, a spiritual slash emotional connection you have to someone after being intimate with them, usually engaging in sexual intercourse to the point that when you want to be rid of them from your mind and your life, even when you are far away from them and out of their presence, you still feel as if they are a part of you and a part of you is with them, causing you to feel unwhole, as if you've given up some of yourself untangible that cannot be easily possessed again. Wow. I think the Urban Dictionary really hit it on the head. Let me read it again. A spiritual emotional connection you have to someone after you're being intimate with them, usually after engaging in sexual intercourse to the point when you want to be rid of them from your mind and your life, even when you are far away from them and out of their presence, you still feel as if they are part of you and a part of you is with them. So they're a part of you is with you and a part of you is with them, causing you to feel unwhole, maybe unworthy, low self-esteem, as if you've given up something of yourself, so yourself untangible. You can't quite put your hands on it that cannot be easily possessed again. That to me I would say is a great definition of this of a soul tie. I believe again, if you look at this picture right here, this is supposed to be Ernest Williams. This is my rendition because I want you guys to get an idea of what you know. I wanted a picture that represented what really a soul tie is. This man is in prison with chains around him, and I really should have put chains around her ch around her waist. Um, and they're holding hands. But if you look, she has a bracelet on that's supposed to be like a handcuff. She's tied to him. Okay. So even though he's taking his picture and they're measuring him, she's right there with him. Even though she may not physically be, she really is. So let's look at this picture right here. This is another one. He's turning one way. She's the other. But there's a chain here. Okay. Soul ties. Destiny's altered. Okay. So um, let's look here. Another one. Okay. So it's almost like you're chained, yoked. But the Bible doesn't even speak about soul ties. And for those of you who are not believers, that's fine. I am. And um, the word soul tie is not used. Uh, there are words like uh, yoked, um, bonds, um, unions, things of that nature, but a soul tie is not knit together, becoming one flesh. The Bible doesn't say anything about a soul tie, but what is a soul tie? We read the definition and I really like, actually, I really like the urban definitions, the urban dictionaries definition of a soul tie. It says the Bible speaks of what is today known as soul tie. So soul ties is a modern verbiage. In the Bible, it doesn't use the word soul tie, but it speaks of them when it talks about souls being knit together, becoming one flesh. A soul tie can serve many functions, but in its simplest form, it ties two souls together in the spiritual realm. So this is just more than just, um, you know, having a friendship. Um, it, it, it binds you in the spiritual realm. And that's why it's so important for people in general, men and women, people who are dating um, friendships to try to ascertain, to test the spirits, to take your time and to see uh, who sent these people. Soul ties b uh, between married couples draw them together like magnets. Have you ever seen where they say married people, they start to look alike because they're married and that's how they're joined. And they're joined like that because they've made a covenant with each other. They've also, you know, had relations with each other. And so that's why I believe Ernesto and many other people, he's not the only person. There are women and men that do the same thing. And their actions to me are very evil and wicked um, because it's predatory in nature, in my opinion. And so one of the things that they do is to love bomb you and, um, and to try to hurry up and quickly get you into the bedroom because you'll be tied. 
Now, people thought that with Ernesto, it was the liquid Viagra and the it was partially that. But the other part was he knew that to get these people attached to him, he had, in my opinion, to quickly bed them and get them in the bed to get them spiritually tied to him. Um, there are um, people who perform something called sex magic and a part of sex magic. And I'll in the simplest form of what I know is uh, there are individuals who've studied this and basically the act of of intimacy creates a lot of energy that gets exchanged. And in order to bind someone to get someone to bend their will or to be attached to you, um, intercourse is one of the things that is utilized period point blank. And so it wasn't just the fact of the liquid Viagra that was being used it was the it's the intent behind what the person is doing and the manipulation that you know the intent being manipulation control domination right and so it says soul ties between married couples draw them together like magnets while soul ties between fornicators and these are people who are having it out so you have a soul tie being married and that's why in my other video the green green waters i was like surely she's she has a soul tie with him but she's also being initiated this is just my opinion y'all this is what i see you may not if you don't have the eyes to see i can't help you with that this is just what i see on a spiritual level and so um his friend who's engaged in activities with him, she's now soul tied with him too. And so a tie is something that is not easily broken. Um, it's not something that you, you have to actually take some uh, energy or some force to kind of pull that apart. So you can form a soul tie being married, but even if you're fornicating, meaning if you're not married, um, you can um, form a soul tie too. And you can be draw and um, can draw a beaten. That's these are the type of soul ties that you, people wonder why. I know what the books say. I'm not blaming victims. What I'm saying is I'm giving you my thought as the sort of spiritual uh, stance behind some of these things where women or men who are abused, mainly women um, who are drawn, uh, you know, after they've been abused back to the person who abused them. You ever heard of a trauma bond? So I know our society gives a lot of definitions to things, but this person is tied and the statistics have shown it takes upwards of seven or more times for a woman or a person to leave their abuser because you are bound in the spirit world. In my opinion, in the spirit realm, instead of her running away, she runs to him, even though he doesn't love her, treats her like dirt, and in the demonic world, unholy, unholy. Now, there are holy son, soul ties between a husband and wife. And then there's ungodly, unholy soul ties can serve as bridges. So it's a bridge. So whatever Ernesto has in him, it gets bridged or transferred to those that are in proximity to him. Now, um, and they pass that uh, demonic um, spirits back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, it says other soul ties can do things such as allow one person to manipulate and control another. And this is where, when you are, I believe, and this is just my belief in my opinion. And, and y'all let me know down in the comments, you know, Shirley met Ernesto. He looked good. He looked good in a suit. He dressed up. He said all the right things. My Belief is, and he said it, and his friend said it, he never loved her. His intent was to manipulate and use. So once he got her in bed, okay, now he has control. So that's where the control of her mind, her will, and her emotions. And then if he's dealing and dialing in the occult or something esoteric that she doesn't know about, then he can control that person even more. It says, other soul ties can do things such as allow one person to manipulate and control. So this is why he had control over all these people. This is not as simple as, oh, asking somebody for money. Some people were like, why does she keep coming back? Because it's, this is spiritual. It was, y'all may not think so, but this is real. He knew exactly what he was doing to control another person. And the other person is unaware 
to what is going on or knows what is going on, but for no real reason allows it to continue. So they don't even know. They don't know. They don't have control. This is what you call witchcraft. They don't know. So if you meet somebody and their intent is to manipulate and use you and then go into the spirit realm and perform, you are as good as God. So it allow, and then if you're entering in with sin, see his friend. Okay. If you're entering in and I'm not here to try to, I'm just telling you what I know and how look at these story. It's a hot mess. Anybody life look good to you? No people getting hit, shot, injured, sickness, all time blocked up in jail. And yes, some, a lot of it is because of their actions, but some people by proximity of just dealing with this person, lost money, lost time away from work, name all over the internet. Now, let's look at Dre, for instance. Dre is a friend of his, right, of Ernesto's. He's not had any intimate relations with him. He's a friend. There's proximity. But a soul ties can be formed through close relationships. He has a close relationship. So now, you know, um, Dre is feeling a little bit of the, you know, fire and the heat because now his voice and his name and his information is out on the internet dealing with Nesto. Now I know he's a loyal friend, but it's only loyalty to a certain degree. And Dre did know that um, he didn't love Shirley. Quite frankly, you know, I think Dre is a good friend and, you know, they've been in prison together. So I think this is a different type of bond that maybe people who've never been in prison, prison with, you don't really know, you know, if you got somebody in, in, in jail that might save your life or have your back, that's a different type of bond. But, um, I think he knows that his friend is just not a good dude. I just think he knows that. So this is a type of bond tie, uh, knitting, you become one flesh. And that's why we're only really supposed to engage in sexual intercourse with our one mate because you become one. I think there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, you know, if you sleep with a harlot, you become one with the harlot. So if you sleep with all these different men and women, you become one with them. And even when, just like the Urban Dictionary said, I like the Urban Dictionary's um, definition, even if you are far from them and you feel kind of unwhole, like you, they have something of yours and you have, yes, because you're knitted together and it's hard to break that apart. So that's why in the last video I did, I'll link it green, green waters. I was like, Hey, anybody who's had close proximity with this man, you need to be delivered. And when I say delivered, you can do some self deliverance, but you got to repent and stop this mess because some of the taintedness some of whatever was defiled, some of whatever he had, be it spirits, we don't know. Okay, spirits of lust, spirits of 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 all type of things. They transfer over to you. Okay? They call them STDs, sexually transmitted demons. Now his friend, which I don't even like to mention her name, you know, I don't know what she believes in. And she doesn't have to believe in anything. But I can tell you from my experience in reading about these things, and when I say my experience, from my education of reading about these things in books and educating myself about narcissistic personality disorder and, um, you know, even watching others, this don't end good. And when I look at some of those videos, there's a lot of manipulation, a lot of trauma bonding going on. Um, a lot of grooming going on. This is a very wicked, it's a very toxic relationship. And I'm just here to say anybody, this is just my opinion. Okay. Who's dealt with this person. If you deal with somebody who's on that spectrum and their goal and their intent is to manipulate, to use, to dominate, to control you, to abuse you, you need to get rid of them. And anything, so let's says how soul ties are performed. Um, sexual relations. Um, and I'm, that's what I'm getting ready to go over, how they are performed, how they are formed. Godly soul ties are formed when a couple, couples are married. Ephesians 5, 31 says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined. It's the word joined unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. So that's a soul tie. And it's a godly soul tie between husband and wife. 
However, when a person has ungodly, meaning now people could do what you want. You could fornicate. Ungodly is outside of marriage with another person. An ungodly soul tie is then formed. And that is um, in 1 Corinthians 6, 16. And it says, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. So the Bible is clearly telling you that you form a soul tie in a godly sense with your marriage partner, but fornication or having sex, they call it a harlot, but that's fornication. You form a tie with a tie with them. This soul tie, this bond, this knitting, um, uh, tie fragments, it fragments the soul, meaning it breaks your soul apart, right? In little fragments. And it's very destructive. And that's why when you see, um, unfortunately, she may not believe this. And I hope the, the young lady gets some help. Um, when you see his friend at these phone calls, she's all over the place. You know, she... Um, She's just all over the place as far as her, her, her thoughts, you know, her mindset. You could see that she's just fragmented in her thought process. It's like she's double minded. Right. So this is why, because she's dealing with somebody who's it fragments your soul and ain't no telling whoever else that she's been with. Right. It's very destructive. They can't do what they say they're going to do because their, their minds are not stable. You know, it's double minded. It says people who have many past, many, many. Now, I know people are talking about body counts right now and how many bodies they got. Well, this is why a lot of people out here, minds are fragmented. They're double minded because you may not have a lot of body counts, but the man or the woman you may be with have multiple body counts. And one of the things that you need to do before you get married to someone, y'all have to bind and cast out and really work on you know, cutting those soul ties in those relationships. And there's work that has to be done. But if somebody got a a thousand body count and somebody else a thousand and y'all come together, I already know what that is. It's going to be very difficult for those people to stay together. They're going to be all over the place. It says people who have many past relationships find it very difficult to bond or to be joined to anybody because their soul is literally fragmented in pieces. This is very serious. So while she's sitting here, you know, repping for her man and talking about all of this, mind you, her soul is fragmented. She's all over the place. In my opinion, she looks like she's mount. I'm looking at her. I'm like, my God, 90 something pounds. And she looks, this is a situation where you say, you know what? I ain't got time to be trying to fight for nobody's freedom. I got to take care of myself. The bottom line is this low self-esteem. She looks good for her age yes but she has low self-esteem if you tell her she's skinny or thin or or call her bony she's going to be upset it's going to cause an injury in her because she's very self-conscious about her looks she even though she looks good and preps and puts ponytails on she is going to be upset because she has low self-esteem and low self-worth she may tell you something different but my assessment from what I see is because if you feel good about yourself, we wouldn't even know about this woman. She wouldn't even be coming to visit somebody else's husband in prison. That's just what it is. Now, Shirley too, Shirley ain't getting out of this unscathed. This, these are things that I've learned because I myself have gone through situations where I've had, you know, low self-esteem and I had to learn. I had to learn to value myself, to love myself, to um, not put others before me and allow people to manipulate and, and abuse me. So I'm not speaking from this from a, a, a area of, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. These are, I'm going to tell you some psychologists watch are watching these videos. They've already, if you are in a, in a psychiatry or psychology field, they've already diagnosed Ernesto and they've already put a diagnosis you know they haven't interviewed them and and saw them personally and given Sonia one too and probably Shirley seriously Shirley can't get out of this unscathed she dresses nice she keeps her hair laid she looks good but she has low self-esteem period she does not care about herself okay that, that, those are facts too. So there's similarities in this. And then until Shirley fesses up to these facts, until 
that other friend of his fesses up to it, they're going to stay and they're going to continue to attract predators and manipulators because there's something about not being, having a good foundation. And if they know that you are, one of the things in his last video, he was like, my ears work. They are very good listeners. They listen for all of your vulnerabilities. He knows that Sonya is self-conscious about her weight. So what he did in that video was he digged at her. Those were low key insults. Oh, you know, he because he knew it made her uncomfortable and she started to squirm because I believe he was upset because there was some things she said she was going to do and she didn't do them. So what he was saying to her was, yeah, you know, I asked you to do stuff. You don't listen to me and you don't do them. So he started digging at her and then immediately she started. It's a dance that they do with each other. Very manipulative. Both of them. Both of them. It's a very destructive evil. All you got to do is watch these videos. It is a very destructive evil um uh, uh, um, existence that they have with demons. That's just what I believe. You don't have to believe it, but there's spirits within these two people that are going against each other. And they're more alike than what you really even understand. So he, he was like, yo, you know, he didn't scream a holler at her. He was like, you know, I asked you to do stuff and I'm not stupid. I know you didn't do it. I asked you to do this. You didn't do it. You told me before about jurisdictions, you know, and you, you told me, you, and then he starts talking about, oh, so, you know, got a little bit of weight or he'll start saying things that are going to make her self-conscious but if you don't know see if you would have caught me five six years ago I wouldn't have picked up on this but I pray for discernment and wisdom so I can see where he's going I look at his facial expressions now I look at hers when she, he knows when she's lying he studied her she starts to scratch her nose and fiddle with her earrings and stuff when she starts lying he has a, these people are masterminds they study you surely he studied you uh that other lady he studied you um to the uh, daughters and sons he studies you he knows how your ins and outs your vulnerabilities and what makes you tick and what makes you talk Literally, they're manipulating each other from behind bars. This, I'm telling you, it is it is crazy. But let's go back to um, how soul ties are formed, sexual relations, whether godly in marriage or ungodly. So she has laid down with him. Shirley has maybe has laid down with him after her. So now Shirley is going to be a little unstable. You know, it says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways because now those spirits that's in Sonia, whether you want to believe this or not, has now transferred from her to her husband to her. So this is why before I said you got to be delivered. OK, other ways to form soul ties. I'm going to shorten this video right quick. Close relationships. Um, let's give you an example in the Bible of King David and Jonathan had a good soul tie or a good, very close relationship as a result of a good friendship. First Samuel um, 18 one says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. But bad soul ties can form from bad relationships as well. Idolizing somebody can cause a bad soul tie. So I know that Dre and Ernesto, they have a relationship. But I can tell you one thing. Um, the proximity of being involved with some of these people, sometimes you just have to cut your losses and just walk away. But like I said, I don't know if there's like the backstory of them being in prison and everything like that. People do what you want, but you know, there's a way that seemed right unto a man, but leads to death. That's all I can say. Um, I have heard too, that when you create a soul tie, um, people get obsessed with idols or their favorite music group that creates a soul tie. Some people, you know, I used to love me some Michael Jackson. Those are soul ties when you idolize somebody. Also, when you make vows, commitments and agreements. So when people go and make certain vows to fraternities, sororities and different things, take oaths, um, that knits your soul. And that's why I think it's in, um, is it Exodus or Leviticus where he says, don't take any oaths. It says vows are known to bind the soul. Numbers 32 said marriage itself consists of a vow. So when you get married, you have to say a vow, right? And binds two people together. Ephesians 531. Therefore, I have little um, to overlook the fact that vows, you know, or saying I'm your man, you belong to me. Those, you're making a vow and a commitment to someone, you're right. Or your mind or, you know, I own you or that type of thing that creates a soul tie. 
right? So there's vows, commitments, close relationships, and also sexual relations. But I think one of the easiest ways to get the strongest soul tie when you're exchanging DNA is through sexual relations. And that's why people who are manipulative, devious, um, narcissists, they will love bomb you to get you in bed. I believe Shirley didn't know who her husband was. God did not send, in my opinion,